In part one of this video, I discussed what the Digium phone module for Asterisk is, how it works, and laid out the simple three-step process for configuration. I also covered the general Asterisk configuration needed for the DPMA to work. Now that step one, create a SIP account, is complete, I can move on to step two, link the SIP account to a phone profile. This configuration is done in resdigiumphone.conf. First, let us examine the general section. This section contains settings that apply globally to all the profiles configured below. Here I have several settings commented for reference and have uncommented the settings I'd like to use. First, I have set Service Discovery Enabled to Yes. This will cause the Astra server to advertise itself on the network using MDNS. I have set the server name to Tutorial Asterisk Server. This is the name my server will advertise via MDNS and how I will be able to identify it if there are multiple Digium configuration servers on my network. Next, I have set the registration address to the address of my Asterisk server and the registration port to 5060. This will tell the phones to use this socket for SIP registration. Here I have set User List Auth to Disabled. When a Digium phone accesses a configuration server, the server sends a list of available phone profiles. If user list auth is set to global pin, then the user will be prompted to enter the global pin number before the phone profile list can be retrieved. By setting it to disabled, this list will simply be provided with no authentication needed. I have also set config auth to disabled. This setting controls the type of authentication needed before the phone will fetch a specific phone profile from the server. There are several options available for configuration authentication. I will cover the MAC option later in the video. For now, I've set this option to disabled. The phone will be able to fetch its configuration from the server without prompting for authentication credentials. I have also set several DPMA parameters that are not directly related to phone provisioning. Refer to the DPMA user's guide for a full list of options. Under the general section, I've set up two other types of sections phone sections, and line sections. Phone sections correspond to individual phones, while line sections represent SIP accounts. Keep in mind that Digium phones can have multiple SIP accounts, so you will see one phone section and one or more line sections for each phone you want to configure. First, take a look at the section that has adorner underscore D70 in brackets and has the type parameter set to phone. This is the phone profile that I have been talking about throughout this tutorial. This particular profile is for Allen's new Digium D70 phone. Beneath the type parameter, you will see the full name parameter, which I have set to Allen Dorner. When the server presents the profile list to the phone, this profile can be selected based on the name configured here. Next you see a line parameter. Each phone section has at least one of these. Line parameters assign SIP accounts defined in SIP.conf to the phone. In this case, we've added a single line parameter that ties the A Dorner SIP account to this phone. Allen has a D70, which has six line appearance keys and supports up to six SIP accounts. If we wanted to tie additional accounts to this phone, we could include up to six line parameters. Finally, you see a parameter labeled as MAC. This is empty for now. Later, I will show how this setting is used in conjunction with the MAC authentication option. Now that we've defined the profile entry for the phone, we can talk about the last section. This has a donor in brackets and has the type parameter set to line. This section corresponds to a SIP account configured in SIP.conf and should be named the same as the SIP.conf account, in this case, a donor. The line will be linked to that account and use its settings. For example, this line will use the SIP secret password and the voice mailbox configured in SIP.conf for the A Dorner account. This section also corresponds to a particular line appearance key on the Digium phone, which is why it is called a line type. In this section, you can configure phone specific settings that are not exposed in SIP.conf. One example is the line label. This is the text that appears on the phone's display next to the line key. Here I have set the line label to be Allen 600. Additionally, I have set the Extend option to B600. This must be the same as the extension number set to dial the SIP account in extensions.conf. Next, I'll add phone and line entries for all of my Digium phones. I'll then save the configuration file and connect to the Asterisk CLI. 
Now I will issue the reload command. This will read the configuration settings I made in the .com files into asterisk. Step 2. Link the SIP account to a phone profile is now complete, and I can move on to the final step. Associate the profile with a phone. I'll show how this works first from the phone's interface. The configuration I've set in resdigiumphone.conf is designed to allow users to be able to configure their own phones. Here is a Digium phone starting up. I'll zoom in on the display to show what's happening. I'll pause for a moment on the Choose Digium Configuration Server screen. Once the phone has reached this screen, it has already detected the asterisk server via MDNS. At this screen, you'll be able to select from multiple configuration servers if available. When there is only one server to choose from, it will automatically be selected after a 5 second timeout. Then the server will present the phone with a list of user profiles to choose from. It's easy to find the right profile. Use the keypad to enter the primary extension number and the list is filtered on the fly. You can also filter by first or last name using the phone's keypad. For example, the digits 252 represent the letters ALA, the first few letters in Alan's first name. Likewise, DOR, or 367, will filter the list based on Alan's last name. Selecting the entry will cause the phone to fetch its configuration from the server. And now the phone is configured. See how the first line key on the phone uses the label Allen 600. This line key will now use the settings I configured in the asterisk.com files. In addition, several of the phone's integrated applications will be configured to work properly for this user, including voicemail and call parking. Keep in mind that as long as authentication is disabled in resdigiumphone.conf, that any profile can be chosen from the profile list when the phone restarts or is set to reconfigure. Finally, I'll show how to link the profile to the phone's MAC address. In some environments, it works best to tie a profile to a phone ahead of time so that when the phone starts, it will fetch its configuration from the server without needing any interaction from the user. This can be accomplished by using the MAC configuration authentication in resdigiumphone.conf. I'll open resdigiumphone.conf and comment out the config auth equals disabled line. I'll then uncomment the config auth equals mac line. In the phone section, I'll fill in the mac equals parameter with a mac address of the phone that I would like to be tied to this profile. I'll then save the text file, connect to the asterisk CLI, and reload the resdigiumphone.so module. This will read in the configuration change I just made. Now, Anytime the phone is restarted or set to reconfigure, the server will know which extension belongs with this phone. The phone will fetch its configuration without any interaction from the user at all. Keep in mind that this is a very simple configuration. It will provision the phone to make calls and access the basic functionality of some of the phone's integrated applications. This configuration does not take full advantage of all of the powerful features the DPMA has to offer. Please see the comments in the sample resdigiumphone.com file along with the DPMA user's guide for a full list of options and configuration instructions. Both are linked in the description section of this video. To learn more about Digium phones and access additional documentation, visit digium.com phones.